Hey, it's Darius and it's Black Friday time. So take advantage of the best savings of the year while they last. There's never been a better time to go to i75cpareview.com whether you want CPA review, EA, or CMA. Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. No coupon code needed. Go to i75cpareview.com right now while the Black Friday special lasts. And if you want CPA review, click Get It Now. And then you can choose between the full course bundle, all parts, for 36 months. If you only need two core parts, then click where it says Get Started and choose one of our CPA review two-part Black Friday specials. If you're looking for the enrolled agent Black Friday specials, use the top menu bar. Same for CMA. So whether it's CPA review, EA, or CMA, get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference. Now we're going to look at transaction effect on liquidity ratios. Because the exam expects a candidate to know how transactions impact certain ratios, like the current ratio, which we know is total current assets divided by total current liabilities. Now, the exam might say that the current ratio began at 2 to 1, which means $2 of current asset for every $1 of current liability. And then here's the transaction. The company borrowed cash. Well, if they borrowed 100000 cash long term by selling bonds, then cash increases, that's a current asset, and long term liabilities increase. Now the increase in cash is an increase in current assets, and that would increase net working capital, which would also increase the current ratio. Why? Because the numerator of the current ratio, current assets, is increasing, with no impact on the denominator of the current ratio, which is current liabilities. And as the numerator goes, so goes a ratio. So this current ratio is going to increase as a result of this transaction, borrowing cash long term, because the numerator is going up and the denominator is not moving at all. And they could ask you a question like this. A company's current ratio started at three to one. The company borrowed 200,000 by issuing long term bonds and receiving cash. What is the effect on networking capital and the current ratio? A says networking capital increases, but the current ratio decreases. Well, let's take networking capital first. Networking capital is current assets minus current liabilities. And if we're taking in cash of 200,000, current assets go up. And then what about current liabilities? No, we're borrowing long term. So there's no impact on current liabilities. So networking capital does increase. But then it says, but the current ratio decreases? No. The current ratio would increase because numerator up, ratio up. And there's no impact on the denominator. So as that numerator, current assets go up, so does the current ratio. So A is half right and A is half wrong, which makes A the wrong answer. Let's look at B. Networking capital remains the same? No. Networking capital increases. B's out. C, networking capital increases and the current ratio remains the same? No. So it must be D, networking capital increases and the current ratio increases. Letter D is correct. Networking capital is calculated as current assets minus current liabilities. Since the company is receiving 200,000 in cash, that's a current asset, current assets up. But the issuance of long-term bonds does not affect current liabilities, so networking capital increases. Now, as for the current ratio, we said current assets divided by current liabilities. Since current assets increase and the current liabilities remain the same, the current ratio will increase because the numerator is going up. And as the numerator goes, so goes the ratio. So notice that when we borrow cash long term, the net working capital, the dollar amount of working capital, that increases and so does the current ratio. What about when we borrow short term instead of long term? What's going to be the impact on networking capital and what's going to be the impact on the current ratio? So we're still on the current ratio and the exam will tell you that the current ratio began, let's say, at two to one and then the company borrowed cash again. But if they borrowed 100,000 cash short term on a nine month bank loan, then cash is going to still go up, increase current assets again, 
But look what's also happening. You're going to have a loan payable short term. So you're going to have a $100,000 increase in current liabilities this time. So now both the numerator and the denominator of the current ratio are increasing by the same amount. As for the net working capital, that's going to stay the same. Your current assets, your current liabilities, that's going to stay the same. But what about the current ratio when you have the numerator and the denominator both increasing by the same amount? And this is more of a math exercise than accounting. This is an analysis type question that the exam loves. So cash is going up by 100,000. That's an increase in current assets. And your short-term payables are going up by 100,000. That's an increase in current liabilities. So both your numerator and denominator are increasing by the same amount. So is the current ratio remaining unchanged at two to one? Do we need algebra for this? Calculus? No. Look how easy this is going to be. Let's assume that instead of the numerator and denominator increasing by 100,000, they're both increasing by one. Let's add one to current assets and one to current liabilities. So they told us that the ratio started two to one. $2 of current asset for every $1 of current liability. If we add one to both sides, the current ratio goes from two to one to three to two because we added one to top and bottom. And when we do that, two to one becomes three to two. So our current ratio, look where it is now. It's three to two, which is the same as 1.5 to one, which means the current ratio as a result of this transaction has decreased from two to one to 1.5 to one. The ratio decreased even though the numerator and denominator increased by the same dollar amount. The absolute value of working capital did not change. The dollar amount of working capital doesn't change, but the current ratio changed. This will happen whenever the ratio starts above one and the top and bottom increase by the same amount. Let's try this. A company's current ratio starts at three to one. If the company borrows 60,000 cash for three months, which of the following is correct? A says the absolute value of working capital has not changed. Is that true? Yes, because if the company borrows 60,000 cash for three months, you've got current assets going up and you've got current liabilities going up. So the absolute value, the dollar amount of working capital stays the same before and after the transaction. What about B? The working capital ratio, the current ratio has decreased. Is that true? Well, we can use that same exercise that we did where we had one to both sides. And the answer is gonna be C, both are correct. Why? Well, we took care of the absolute value of working capital. We said the dollar amount doesn't change. But what about the current ratio? Let's assume that instead of the numerator and denominator increasing by 60,000 cash, they're both increasing by a factor of one. Let's add one to current assets and one to current liabilities. If we do that, we go from three to one to four to two. Well, four to two is the same as two to one. Therefore, the ratio has fallen from three to one down to two to one. Although the absolute value, the dollar amount of working capital has not changed. And this question asked, a company's current ratio starts at three to one. If the company borrows 60,000 cash for three months, which of the following is correct? And the answer is both are correct. The dollar amount of working capital hasn't changed, but the working capital ratio decreased. More to do with math, not so much accounting. But it's consistent. Anytime the ratio starts above one to one, if you add the same amount to both sides, which way is the ratio going to go? Down. Okay, how is it going to work if the ratio starts below one to one? All right, so now the exam will tell you that the current ratio began at 0.8 to one, which is really 0.8, and that's less than one to one. That means 80 cents of current assets for every $1 of current liabilities. And here's the transaction. The company borrows cash. Well, if they borrow 100,000 cash short term, nine month bank loan, then you have cash increasing, increase in current assets, and you have an increase in current liabilities for the nine month bank loan. The result is that net working capital is unchanged, but what about the current ratio? Both numerator and denominator are increasing by the same amount again. Let's assume that instead of the numerator and denominator increasing by 100,000, they're both increasing by one. 
So add a factor of one to current assets and current liabilities. So that means we go from 0.8 to one to 1.8 to two and 1.8 to two equals 0.9 to one. So the current ratio has increased from 0.8 to one to 0.9 to one, even though we just added the same amount to both numerator and denominator. Why? It's all because the ratio started below one to one. When the ratio starts below one to one, if you add the same amount to both numerator and denominator, the ratio will always increase. In this case, it was the current ratio. Next time it might be the quick ratio or the cash ratio. Any ratio will increase if you start below one to one and add the same amount to both numerator and denominator. We know also that if the ratio started above one to one and the same amount was added to the numerator and denominator, the ratio would decrease. We saw that in the previous slide. Let's try this. A company's current ratio starts at 0.7 to one. If the company borrows 60,000 cash for three months, which of the following is correct? A says the absolute value of working capital has not changed. That means the dollar amount of working capital stays the same before and after borrowing 60,000 for three months. Yeah, that's true because cash goes up and so does current liabilities. Current assets up, current liabilities up by the same amount. The dollar amount of working capital, the absolute value, that doesn't change. So A, that's true. How about B? B says the working capital ratio or current ratio has increased as a result of the transaction. Is that true? Yes. Letter C, both are correct. The absolute value of working capital, the dollar amount, is calculated as current assets minus current liabilities. And since both current assets and current liabilities increase by the same amount, the absolute working capital value remains the same. So A is a correct statement. As for the current ratio, let's assume that instead of the numerator and denominator increasing by the $60,000 given in the facts, they're both increasing by one. Let's add a factor of one to current assets and one to current liabilities. We go from 0.7 to one, which is 0.7, to 1.7 to 2, which is 0.85. Which direction has our working capital ratio gone as a result of this transaction? Increased. The ratio has increased even though the absolute value, the dollar amount of working capital has not changed. And this question asks, the company's current ratio starts at 0.7 to 1. If the company borrows 60,000 cash for three months, which of the following is correct? And the answer is both are correct. The absolute value of working capital, the dollar amount hasn't changed, but the working capital ratio has increased. Let's try this. A company has current assets of 500,000 and current liabilities of 600,000. So it looks like that current ratio is starting below one to one. The company's current ratio will be increased by, A says receiving 40,000 cash from a short-term loan. B says receiving 40,000 cash from a long-term loan. C says both will increase the current ratio. D says neither. And the answer is C, both. Since current assets are 500,000 and current liabilities are 600,000, the ratio starts below one to one at five to six, which is 0.83. Why five to six? Since current assets are 500,000 and current liabilities are 600,000, we can say that there's $5 of current assets for every $6 of current liabilities five to six, which is below one to one and translates to 0.83. That's where the working capital ratio is starting. Now in choice A, receiving 40,000 cash from a short term loan increases both cash and current liabilities by the same amount. So current assets and current liabilities are going up by the same amount. So we can then add one, which is the same amount to both the numerator and denominator and go from five to six, which is 0.83, to six to seven, which is 0.86. And that's an increase in the current ratio from receiving cash from a short-term loan, but it's all because the ratio began below one to one. We know that in letter A, they received 40,000 cash from a short-term loan. And now we know that that's gonna increase the current ratio because it began below one to one, but it's not gonna increase the net working capital dollar amount. That'll stay the same. Now, choice B, receiving cash from a long-term loan increases the numerator of the current ratio, current assets, without any impact on the denominator of the current ratio. Numerator up, ratio up, 
Thus, the current ratio increases for receiving cash from a long-term loan. And in choice B, it made no difference whether the ratio began below one-to-one or above one-to-one because we did not add the same amount to both sides. We only added to the numerator without any impact on the denominator. And as numerator goes, ratio goes. So numerator went up, ratio increases. Note that both increases in cash increase the current ratio. So whether we increased cash for a short-term loan or we increased cash for a long-term loan, they both increase the current ratio, but for different reasons. And that's why I don't want you to memorize this. You need to be able to analyze it the same way we do it here. Use the factor of one if the numerator and denominator are increasing by the same amount. We did that in choice A. Don't use the factor of one if the numerator and denominator are not increasing by the same amount, like in choice B, all we had to do here was notice that the numerator was increasing and the denominator was remaining the same. There's too much here to memorize. You need to recognize, attack it, and then move on. What I-75ers refer to as the RAM method. Recognize, attack, move on. Let's try this. If a company has a current ratio of three to two, and pays off a portion of its accounts payable with cash, which of the following is correct? All right, well, A says net working capital decreases. B says net working capital increases. What accounts are impacted by this transaction? Well, we have accounts payable, a current liability going down, and we have cash going down by the same amount. So the dollar amount of working capital should stay the same. So net working capital should not increase or decrease. So A and B are out. What about the current ratio? Well, we're pretty sure it's going to change even though the net working capital stays the same. Letter D is correct. The current ratio is going to increase. We said net working capital remains the same since both current assets and current liabilities are decreasing by the same amount. But as for the current ratio, let's subtract a factor of one from both sides. The current ratio began at three to two. But when we subtract one from the numerator and one from the denominator, we get two to one. Well, three to two is the same as one and a half to one. That's where we started. And now the ratio is two to one. So the ratio actually increased, even though the absolute value of working capital, the dollar amount did not change. And the increase in the ratio was because the ratio began above one to one and we went and subtracted the same amount from both sides. Once again, this is a math exercise rather than anything to do with accounting. But the exam loves it, so you've got to be ready. So if the question asks like this one did, company has a current ratio of three to two and pays off a portion of accounts payable with cash, which of the following is correct? And the answer is the current ratio increases. Letter D is correct. How about this? If the current ratio is 0.7 to 1, and then accounts payable of 14,000 is paid off with a similar amount of cash, which of the following is correct? And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments section. And let me know which CMA video you'd like me to do next. And if you're struggling with the CMA exam or the CPA exam, and you found this video helpful and want to see the rest of it and more videos like it, Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark. I'll leave a link in the description. You see the menu bar at the top. If you're a CMA candidate, you click here and choose part one or part two. I-75 CMA is the only material that you'll need to pass the exam. You might have other stuff, but you won't need it. So whether it's CMA or CPA, go to I-75CPAReview.com and get yourself on I-75 with me. Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference.